Can you see my screen okay? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, so feel free to ask questions, um, but I was just going to talk about briefly about um, how we developed the site and how we use IIIF in it. There's a, um, a fuller write-up of, um, of everything we did really with the, the website development at this location, um, but I'm just going to give a, a summary of this. Um, so we, we've digitised these journals over a number of years um, and we had them all digitised uh, probably about a couple of years ago really and we've been working up to, to building this website but we actually started the website development in December uh, and went live in the end of March so it was quite an intense uh, development process. Um, this is a new website and if you've seen our uh, newspaper website it'll be very familiar. Um, when we decided to do this development, we decided to um, have the interface between our data and the website um, be IIIF as much as possible. Um, previous website developments have always kind of gone into our repository and, and processed METS documents and then and done things. But for this one, we wanted to make it all um, based on IIIF and for the descriptive meta, metadata EDM. Um, so all the stuff you see on this uh, site is, is generated either from the EDM or for the IIIF. So the uh, different uh, dates are all from the nav dates, which are in uh, the issue uh, in the issues. Um, so when you a browser a journal, so if I choose one, um, you then get to this page, and this page is driven um, some from. So once we had all the triple F uh, items, we then index them all into Solar. So when you're browsing the website, you're um, behind the scenes, it's querying Solar to uh, to get uh, different items. Um, so this is a list of issues, and then once you click on the issues, you get taken to um, the Universal Viewer, uh, which we'll load in a second. Or we can use this one. Uh, So once you uh, view to an issue, you get to this. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see there's the, uh, the list of issues which make up uh, this journal. So this journal has 17 issues, and then uh, within the issue, we have articles. Um, so if you click uh, Tier Newith, you'll get taken to the Tier Newith article. And if you look at the thumbnails, um, the article kind of stretches from there all the way down to there, and then the next article there. Um, we have um, articles marked out for only some of our content. Um, the vast majority of the content doesn't have uh, articles and if you will look at one of those you'd basically uh, see this list here which would just be a list of issues for that title um, but for some of them we do have article level metadata. On the right hand side you see um, the metadata which is coming out of the manifest um, we haven't used this for indexing purposes but we do use, show this in the viewer. Um, so we indexed, uh, we created a sitemap which was a complete list of the 460 uh, titles uh, and the sitemap uh, contained uh, links to the manifest, to the uh, collection level. So this is an example of the sitemap. Um, we didn't include um, dates which we wish we had done later on in the project, so when this was generated. So the kind of the process during the development of uh, organizing what needs to be indexed was very much a manual process. Um, it would have been much easier if we'd had a date here which said when they were last updated so we could kind of automate the indexing process. Um, so a link from the sitemap would take you to a, um, a collection which is equivalent of a journal title. And then inside the collection you have links to the individual manifests. And if you click on the manifests, you then uh, get the metadata. This is an example of one which doesn't have any structures, uh, so you just have a list of pages. We also have a link to the search service. Um, so within the viewer, um, we've got the search service here. So we, we exposed our original uh, Alto documents as uh, annotation lists, and they were indexed into Solar. And I'll talk a bit about that later, but that was exposed as a IIIF endpoint. So if I search for Jones, <clears throat> it should show the results. Um, just having a quick look at the, so this is the EDM which is um, linked to from the uh, the title level um, collection manifests. Um, so you can see we have the journal title, um, a longer version of the title, and then we have kind of the abstract uh, in English and Welsh. Um, we also have the publisher and the kind of the place where it was published, uh, the date when it was created, uh, and the language of the publication. 
um, we had to do quite a bit of validation to make sure that all of the fields in the website existed in all of the, the manifests and everything had a date uh, and things like that. Um, this is an example of a, a journal which doesn't have articles. So if you click on the issues, uh, you just get the list of issues. Um, we did have a, a few examples. Uh, this is one example where um, we had a tool where you could add missing pages, and this is kind of an extreme example um, where it's an issue containing uh, 16 pages. And unfortunately, the only page we have is, is page 16. Um, so we had to, the more common example is where you'd have uh, most of the images in a single image be blank. Um, but we had to put this into the, into the manifest so it shows through the viewer. Um, we also had some, um, this is uh, another example where um, the image was unavailable. So we had a corrupted JPEG 2000, which we weren't able to recreate in time. And so this is a more common example where you have images and then a single one, which is, is unavailable. Um, we also had some content. Some of this content is very modern. Um, this was 1999, so it's still in copyright. And there were some times when we were unable to uh, get uh, permission to show. Um, so this example, um, We've kind of, I think, done it badly, but we've done an implementation of the auth API um, to be able to show this message. Ideally, we'd be able to do it bilingually, so if we're in the English interface, it only shows us English. Uh, so it says we do not have rights to play as material. Um, we looked at a better way of doing it um, through looking at info.jsons and putting in a, a message in there, and that's implemented here, but we haven't implemented it correctly for it to work uh, in the viewer. Um, so the biggest part of the work really was um, looking at converting our Alto annotation lists um, and kind of compressing them into solar records. Um, so I just want to show you an example. Um, so this is a solar record for a particular um, page. Um, you can see that we've got the full page text here. Uh, and this is what we search for in the website. Uh, and then we've got this kind of encoded um, coordinates. So this basically says that uh, the word the is that this X, this Y, this width, and this height. Um, and because the IIIF search APK requires you to return um, the word as well as the coordinates, um, we've stored this as a, a list of um, strings in the solo record um, so that we can return this information, which has caused some issues, which I, I talked about in the list, and I can answer questions uh, if there are any. Um, but are there uh, any questions anyone wants to ask or anything people want to see further? A quick question, Glenn. Do you have you sounds like you have the the page text in your solar index twice then, yes? You have it in the page text field and every word is re-represented in the cord coordinates? That's right, yeah, it's all duplicated. So we have two fields, we have uh, everything twice, yes. I think we could well we'd have to look at the way we look at solar, but we might be able to use one single field. Um but yeah, at the moment we have every word repeated. Mm -hmm. And that's generated from OCR, yeah? It is from Alto, yeah, from Alto OCR. Okay, thanks. This is really great, Glenn. And I, I for one, certainly appreciate the write-up that you shared the, the shared in browser as well. No problem. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Glenn. I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>